Mr. Wolfington, uh, we, I just saw part of this uh, incredible movie that he's in, still in um, production, but already show there's going to be a masterpiece, I would say, for, for hope, for hope in the world and all in America, because finally we're going to have uh, the true story of uh, Italian immigration, only Italian immigration, immigration in America and all in America, and that especially the story of a special woman, a saint, that they created an incredible uh, uh, story on helping uh, those immigrants. Uh, but you, you know, I want I, I before talking about this woman and the movie, and you know, Mother Cabrini, uh, Francesca Cabrini, you, you, you already, I already heard that this is not going to be a religious movie. I mean, it is a movie about a woman that was, of course, uh, a nun was uh, created a on on order, but but it's something more. You, you, this movie wants to be a movie uh, about uh, about a woman. And not just because it uh, doesn't have a, just the religion aspect. And I, um, the, the director, no, it's, the director is Monteverde, Alejandro Monteverde, right? Uh, it's a, and she's portrayed by Cristiana Dell'Anna, okay? Yeah. So, but I, before we start on the movie and on the subject of Mother Cabini, I want to know, talk about you. <laughs> that you are the, one time they would say Deus Machina, right? that without you, this movie will never have happened. So I wanna know, first of all, about you, if you can tell us, the reader of this interview, how started the interest that you had on first on Mother Cabrini, and then on, on the idea to come to, to, that you wanted to, a movie to be made. Okay, that's, a, that's, that's, that's good. I started with Mother Cabrini in 1955. Uh, I went to a church I'd never been to before. And I saw this woman statue. And then after mass, the priest said, we're gonna have a nine week novena on Mother Cabrini. So I went to the nine week, nine week novena and I said, wow, what an incredible woman. I'm going to model my life. I'm going to make her my patron saint because I realized what a great leader she was, what a great entrepreneur she was, and, 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 and the fact that she had such incredible vision. That was 1955, and I made her my patron saint. And in my business, I traveled around the world, including a lot of time in Italy. And I would ask people, do you know Mother Cabrini? And no one knew anything about Mother Cabrini. Most people never heard of her. And even in America, where she's the first American saint, they didn't know of her. So 55 years later, a woman walked into my office who was a Cabrini nun, Sister Mary Louise Sullivan, who had just written a book on Mother Cabrini and said, will you help us do a movie on Mother Cabrini? I said, no, I can't do that. Because I had done a movie in 2006 called Bella and I knew how hard it was to do a movie, not just to make it, but to market it. So I said, I can't do it, sister, I can't do it. She bugged me for three years. She invited me up to the Cabrini Shrine in New York and introduced me to Lux Vito, an Italian film company that was going to do the movie on Mother Cabrini. When I saw what they were going to do, I said, sister, you can't do that at the Cabrini. It was going to be a regular kind of religious film nothing really solid about the person. I said, we have to do a Gandhi kind of movie. You know, he was a Hindu, but it didn't get in the way of who he was. She's a nun, but we want to do a, business, a movie of a woman and let people see what she overcame and how she overcame it. And that's kind of how it all started. And then I had to get a writer. So we got a writer, we went to Milan we visited her Cadogno, where she grew, her city, and we spent 10 days there with the historians and going through and walked the walk of Mother Cabrini. We went to the Vatican Library. We spent three days going over her trial, which is what they call the canonization process. We came back to America, walked through New York every step of the way that Mother Cabrini 
every, every step she took. We went to Chicago, we went to New Orleans, we went to Denver. We did not go to Seattle, which was a big city where she built a big hospital. Then we read 22 books on her life, every book we could find. So when we were done, I said to the writer, now you can write the script. And he really captured her beautifully. I think we probably knew more about Mother Cabrini than anybody in the world when we sat down and wrote that script. Then we had to put the cast together. And Scorsese had said to me, when I called him, he was gonna do a movie on Mother Cabrini in 1976. I said, could I have a copy of the script? I'll buy it. They didn't have a copy. So that's, that's why we set out to do, our, to do our own script. Now we had to put a production team together and get the actors and the actresses. He said to me, you should have an Italian actress. We didn't pay attention to who him. Said, who said to you this? Uh, Scorsese, in a, in a note he gave me. He said, you should, have, you should have an Italian actress. And we did not start out looking for an Italian actress. And our casting director called us one day and said, I have the perfect person to play Mother Cabrini. And it was Christiana Delano. She said, I'll put all my money, <clears throat> I'll put all my money on her. So, and so we took a shot and she's magnificent. As you can see in the act, she's absolutely perfect. She, she, she's her. <laughs> she... <laughs> and we have, we have a big Italian cast. What do you imagine to be her. We have uh, eight people from Italy in our cast. We have a young boy uh, who plays, uh, in fact, uh, I won't show you the cast now, but we have a young boy who, who's been in 22 movies. We have a, a girl who plays the prostitute in the film. She plays Victoria, a magnificent actress, magnificent. Uh, and as I say, 35% of the film is gonna be shot in Italian with English subtitles. And the rest will be in English. And I want to ask you, when you know you contacted uh, Scorsese, that he's, I mean, he's not one of the best directors in the world, but he he also portrayed many times Italians. Uh, I would to say that most of the time, the Italians in Scorsese movies are mobsters, you know. <laughs> um, why Scorsese, I mean, they wanted to do the movie in 1976. You, did you try to get Scorsese as a director or you didn't even try? Well, he was doing The Irishman at the time. I would have loved to have Scorsese at the time in my, in my head. I would have liked to have had Scorsese. Mm. Uh, he had mentioned many times in his writings that he wanted to do a great movie other than Mafia movie of a great Italian. Mm -hmm. Because the Mother Cabrini film, when, the, when, when people see this film, the only films they've had represented Italians in our country, mostly our mafia. Now we're gonna have a movie, this magnificent woman that I think is gonna really uh, inspire a lot of people and motivate a lot of people to become better people. I, I wanna ask you uh, something because uh, it's something that has related with the days that we're talking in this moment because the next week uh, that he's gonna be here in New York today for example, the, the Columbus Parade, the Columbus Day, he's practically uh, he, uh, going to be celebrated in New York in a few days. And there's been a lot of polemics at the same time since Columbo, the figure of uh, Christopher Columbus, yeah. is, uh, is the right one for the Italians to, in, in America, to celebrate as a, as a symbol, you know, of uh, Italian uh, genius, but also Italian struggle and to make it in this country. So uh, it's, a kind of a pro it's a kind of a provocation, my question, because uh, there has been, a, again, in, especially in New York City, but all around the country, a lot of uh, debate about if it's proper to, to offend, you know, because many people get offended on, uh, on Columbus celebration because history tells us that Columbus had a part also on, uh, on enslaving people and doing so much. So, um, do you think that Mother Cabrini, Francesca Cabrini, could uh, be a better symbol or should be celebrated the same day? Maybe they all, it, it becomes the C-Day, Columbus, but also Cabrini, you know, in, uh, 
for the Italians in, uh, in America. It's funny you say that. In, in Denver, in Colorado, Columbus Day is now Cabrini Day. They did change it. And so Cabrini is a national holiday in Colorado. Uh, we've been talking to a lot of cities about this. And here, here's how I say it. Uh, I say that if we had an Olympic, a gold medal and a silver medal, the Italian American that should be most respected and represented and gold medal is Cabrini. And everyone else gets, everyone else gets a silver medal. Uh, Mother Cabrini had, a, she named her first hospital Columbus Hospital. So she had, a, you know, a, a, a re, the same kind of respect for Columbus that, that, that uh, everyone else had. But I do believe that in America, especially, uh, the greatest Italian woman is Mother Cabrini. So for you, it's not to put down Columbus, it's just that Cabrini is better. <laughs> she, has a, she is a better medalist. I definitely don't want to put down Columbus because I think a lot of the things they're saying are false. Columbus was a great, great man. I'm just saying that Cabrini was at a much higher level in everything she did. And I think the, the, the values and the ideals that she stands for, and not only that, but her, her incredible love of Italy and, and her, uh, when you talk about the heritage of the Italian nation and America, no one pushed more than Mother Cabrini that they honor the language and the music and the and the art of, we see of opera in the movie that are the part of opera for example because she was very very creative she understood how to attract the people that had money that had money that had the, you know the interest in art she knew how to use the italian art in the in this case opera how to attract people right to to funding her hospitals i love the way you say it you know she was so smart uh she would open schools for the rich. And they, they, she was such a great educator, they flocked to get in her schools, but she would take that money to open schools for the poor. <clears throat> and her hospital, she built her hospital so the half the hospital would be for the very rich who would pay for the other half of the hospital for the poor. She had her own farm system for recruiting uh, uh, all, Every young woman wanted to be part of Cabrini. Her vision and leadership were so strong that, that I mean, she had to turn people away. She, she had everybody trying to be part of her order. A, a, a really dynamic woman. And yet a very sickly woman, by the way. You know, a very yeah. weak, sickly woman. Yeah, she was, uh, she, you know, she lived practically 60, 67 years. Seven years. Uh, and uh, you, want, you know, but she did accomplish so much in those in, in in her life that she lived, she used to say, you see also in, in the movie that, 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 that you know that the world is now uh, is too small for all the things she wants to do. <laughs> she had such a vision. She would say to her nuns, you say to her nuns, we have plenty of time to rest in heaven. We're here to work. And she worked them 18 hours a day. And uh, <clears throat> but her vision was eternity. Her vision wasn't just here, her vision was eternity. And Columbus, you know, I say that Columbus discovered uh, America, where we can say they had discovered the empire of hope. Yes. Making hope uh, something that is not just a good slogan for politics or for other things, but they, they, they you really, with that in mind of hope, you can really build concrete things and, and change the life of, uh, of a thousand, even millions of people. Did you ever find, I mean, I don't know if it happened in the production of the movie or maybe if you, in reading all those books, uh, um, did you ever witness uh, or did you ask anybody that those children, for example, that were, uh, they went through her schools or, you know, that she helped in, in, in all the city. We know, for example, in, in New Orleans that she, that she did this, you know, when the New Orleans there was, I believe there was, uh, uh, the yellow fever or something that there are a lot of women that were dying and and uh, and she created right away a system to take care of uh, of the children of those women that couldn't raise the children anymore if not they will be do you know what happened to to some of those children not in New Orleans around the United States that went through her ed education if you want of her nuns if we have somebody that I don't know even became a very important person or just a regular guy but, or a regular woman, but 
that ha uh, they that has a testimony, it's something that that they can uh, remember well, uh, and they told to to somebody, maybe in some biography or something. What you know? What is the memory of going through a Cabrini school? Uh, I the last I talked to a woman by the name of Sister Ursula, one of her nuns. Mm -hmm. She was the last one to get her veil from Mother Cabrini. Mm -hmm. She lived to one hundred and four. Wonderful. I had a chance to meet her when she was about 100. <laughs> but still, she was very sharp, and we had a great, great, great uh, conversation. Uh, there are people, uh, we had someone call us last week whose uh, aunt, great aunt, was the nurse that took care of Mother Cabrini when she died in, Columbia, in, in Chicago. Um, I don't have the history. Let me, let me put it the other way around. I'm convinced, and what drove me for this movie is that every Italian American of this generation owes Cabrini a debt of gratitude because she was foundational in where they are today. And I think- uh, So let's say, let's say Nancy Pelosi, I just, just to, I drop that at the name of the most important uh, uh, political or institutional figure in America today right. as a woman is sure. an Nancy Pelosi, that he's the Speaker of Congress and is the highest, with the Supreme Court, we have also judges in, in the Supreme Court, is the highest level that an Italian-American arrived in this country. So you say, practically, what you're saying is that Nancy Pelosi hold to Mother Cabrini where she is now. Exactly. <laughs> I believe that in my heart. And I think maybe Nancy believes it too. Uh, Nancy has looked at some of our clips Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think uh, she's very very supportive of this film. Very good. I I, I want to ask. Um, uh, there is another um, things that is important to for me. You know, I am at the United Nations talking to you from the United Nations. Uh, the United Nations now the Secret UN Secretary General is Antonio Guterres. That was before become becoming the Secretary General. He was the. Uh, High Commissar, the director for the UNHCR, that is the, the agency for refugees, for people that, you know, there's this place all over the world. And today, actually, the director is um, Filippo Grandi, that is an Italian, and he's the, in charge of uh, what is the biggest UN agency that has to take care of millions of refugees. And Grandi, when he comes here, talks and tells us to our journalists, he says that this is that at the moment we have for refugees and migrants because it's very difficult the distinction. Okay, one is somebody is a refugee, one is somebody is migrant, and a migrant sometimes becomes a refugee. It means that he doesn't have a place where to come back. Okay, uh -huh. um, and he tell us, Grandi, and before Guterres, they tell us always that this is the biggest crisis. I mean, yes, we talk about climate change and we talk about the COVID, but the migrants and refugee issues is the biggest crisis since World War II. We have more millions. And the reaction of rich country, many countries, including this one, is instead to open the doors or at least help more for last years has been the contrary. It's going to pushing back, punishing, kind of punishing uh, the refugee or the migrants. And you saw, for example, what happened just at the border of this country just a few days ago with the Haitian, with the Haitian uh, refugee, uh, I would call it refugee, not migrants, because they were coming out of an island that, that he's in totally destruction at the moment, or in the border with Messi. I arrived to my question. If Mother Cabini was alive today, in this state, she was born in 1850, she was born in 1950, okay? Not 1850, 90, right. one century later. And she will have lived through the big refugee migrant crisis of our days and see how government, this government, with, not only with Trump, uh, also with uh, Biden is doing a little bit better now with, as far as to do with the uh, refugee, but with still a lot of problems. How do you think she will have reacted? We saw in the movie a storm. No, she goes inside the Italian Senate. That is because she wants money for the back. But could you imagine her storming the Congress with Pelosi as a speaker? 
<laughs> and give a kind of a speech like she did. Uh... Yeah, I, I, she, she absolutely would. Mother Cabrini had three things, uh, humility, love, and service. And you heard her say that we're all children of God. And that was her thought. You know, she had no, th in fact, one line in the movie is we are one. And, and I think that uh, she, she, she would have gone to the end of the earth for every single soul that came, came across the border. They were all important. And, and she, 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 she would be I mean, now at the border, maybe with the, between Texas and Mexico, or, or, or be at the, in those places where they put their children in the cage. She will go there, and, and who knows what she will do. <laughs> well, no, seriously, she, she was such a great organizational genius. She invented Just Do It. Just Do It was not a Nike thing. Mother Cabrini invented Just Do It. When she, first, when she became a nun, five days later, after the bishop made her a nun, she opened her first school. That was in Italy. She opened seven schools in her first year, several orphanages. When she came here, she had 150 nuns already in her order. Mm -hmm. She was in this country two days and opened her first school. She opened in a basement of a church. But she knew the power of education and she knew the power of taking youth immediately and putting them in school and get them educated, of dressing them up. She made sure everybody was dressed. She always had seamstresses working for her because she'd take the orphans immediately and dress them up and clean them up and make them feel good about themselves. And she always looked someplace like in New York to take them out of the city, out in the country air. She had a whole philosophy on how to handle children. And, and her teaching methods, today we still have copies of her teaching philosophy. Incredible. You were never allowed to reprimand a student, ever, or embarrass him, or talk down to him. If you had a problem, you had to take him out of the class and talk to him privately. Number two. She, she, she had the method. Yeah. She had a method. And because she studied to be a teacher, that's what she was. She was a teacher. And, but when she started teaching, she was so well organized that all the bishops said to her, we want you to open more schools for us. And that's how she got into it. And then, and then she's, from a young girl, she wanted to be a missionary. But, uh, but, but ed ed education was, her, was, her, was the backbone of everything Mother Cabrini did, and love, and love. Um, Pope Francis does I think we, I think I lost you for a few seconds. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. My question was Pope Francis, does he know about this movie? Uh, Pope Francis, I probably doesn't know about this movie yet. Um, I think he will know about it and then not you know, within the next month, hopefully. Uh, it's funny, you know, when Pope Francis came to Philadelphia, when he came to America, he came to Philadelphia, they gave him a statue of the first American saint. And they gave him a statue of Elizabeth Seton, who was not the first American saint. Of course, he knew that because Mother Cabrini was very big in Argentina and in Brazil. So he knew, he knew of Mother Cabrini and he knows Mother Cabrini well. Um, so I'm very anxious for him I, I, to, to find out, see the movie. I think he'll, I think he'll love the movie. Sorry, I have, um, there is a UN announcing uh, some of the... Um, so I think I, I have to ask you to repeat a little bit because I, I couldn't hear that the last part of the Pope where you think so, what, what will happen when, when he will find out about the movie? I, I think I, I'm trying to get, uh, as a young priest who's very close to the Pope, who I'm hoping will get the Pope interested that we could show him part of the movie I can do with you. And, then, and a part of the Pope, what you, you know, you are practically not only an organizer, you funded this movie, you put everything you have in a stake in the sense that you are, you're, you're a Businessman, entrepreneur, you did you did so much, but for this movie, you practically put it at 
all your energy resources for this movie? Who do you expect to help for this movie? Because this movie has to be still completed, right? As I mean, it's done, it's, it's going already to a phase that cannot go back. I mean, cannot, you can't stop, but at the same time, how, how you think you can arrive to, to find to a finish of this movie? And what are you asking, not only to the Pope, if it's the Pope, but any, anyone that would like to help, what it should do? Well, first of all, we formed a 5013C. This movie is strictly for charity. Anyone who donates to this movie gets a full tax write-off. If they do it with stock, they also avoid their capital gains tax on that. But more importantly, when the revenue comes in for this film, it goes back to the donor's choice. So if a donor was going to, we had one donor who was going to give a big donation to Villanova University. He gave us a million dollars for the film when the revenue comes in, his pro rata share will go back out to Villanova University towards his commitment. So it's really, it's really, it's really like getting double bang for the buck. It's like an investment. <laughs> like an investment, but, and more importantly, the film is an asset that, that we, wanted to, we wanted to make a film that would stand the test of time. The reason we've worked so hard and so artistically on this film, we wanted to put this film in a class by itself that people want to look at for ages and will produce income for ages to go back to charity. You know, the Cabrini nuns are, are now in 17 countries. They have 15,000 Cabrini hands working with the poor, with the homeless, with the- uh, Is the movie you know, also help that, that the Cabrini endeavor in the, around the world still, you know, you want to, the movie to become an asset? Yes. And, 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 and the funds that from the, from the film, we'll come back in to support, support their to support their work. So it's uh, not a, such as a great story, Cabrini. It's also going to be something that's going to help charity for a long time. And uh, you know, Mother Cabrini. I mean, when you th when you think to Mother Cabrini, you cannot stop thinking and of another mother that she passed away uh, not long ago, and and she was very very famous and won the Nobel Prize. That was uh, Mother Teresa, right? Teresa. Uh, um, do you see a, a part, you know, do you see similarity and what there is, there is a connection between the two? Well, you know, Mother Teresa was, when she saw the canonization process of Mother Cabrini and learned about Mother Cabrini, she said, I'm going to model my life after Mother Cabrini. And, and that's exactly what she did. But to be honest with you, there was no publicity in Mother Cabrini's time. When Mother Teresa's time, there was people could see what she did. Mother Cabrini was so much better at organization to create, to create schools and colleges and universities and orphanages in a way that uh, no one has ever duplicated. But the love, the, but the love and the way she treated uh, the, the Mother Teresa and Mother Cabrini had was equal. Uh, for, the, for, the, for every person they worked with. Um, I'm done in the sense I understand that, that I, again, this is not, it's not only a movie. <laughs> it's not gonna be a movie. This is gonna be a message, a message, yeah. a strong message. Um, again, because uh, we as uh, La Voce di New York, we are in Italian, language uh, and we also publish in English and this will be in both languages, but you know, we, our readers, the most our readers in New York, in America and also around the world in Italy are Italians, are all American of Italian origin. So what is the message that you want watching this movie that the Italians here in America, especially, but not only in America, around the world and in Italy, gain, get once for all, from the story of this woman, Francesca Cabrini. Wow. Uh, number one, we want to make Mother Cabrini known and understood that she was probably one of the great Italian women of all time. She had the skills of a John D. Rockefeller, a J.P. Morgan, a Winston Churchill, 
with her never quit, never quit attitude. That from the day she was six years old, she had a commitment to what she was going to do in life. And she had such a great sense of values. We think Mother Cabrini is a walking sermon without words. When people see this movie, just watching her life, how she lived, the love that she gave, the sacrifice, her life, her life was lived for others. That was her life, to live her life for others. And I think it's going to inspire people. Um, like you did with you. Yeah, yeah, she did with me. Yeah, she got me fired up at a young age. And, 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 I'm, and you mentioned earlier, uh, I'm not Italian. People say to me, Yusuf, you're not Italian. Why are you pushing your mother Cabrini? And I always tell them I had an Italian girlfriend. <laughs> no, but the, but the truth was, I, think, I, I just think she's a great woman. And, uh, and if you're Italian, nobody pushed or taught more of the, the beauty of being an Italian and the pride of being an Italian than Mother Cabrini. She just instilled that in everyone. As I said earlier, the great music, the great art, the great the, 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 uh, uh, language. Uh, Mother Cabrini just spent a lot of time in Italy. You know, she came to, when she came to America, she went back and forth. She went back and forth 25 times. I mean, she had her, she had places in Spain, places in, uh, big in Italy always, and when always went back, uh, England, uh, France. Mother, Mother Cabrini was everywhere. But her, her, her you know, her, her, her ability to go in, to establish a school, to staff the school, and put the administration in, and then walk away, and have it run like a clock. That's how well organized she was. When she did Columbus Hospital, every person in that hospital knew their job right down to the guy sweeping the floor. And she had a way of motivating them that they not only knew their job, but they did it with such enthusiasm and with such love. That was her key. And I think if people can learn that lesson, it'll bring joy into their life, number one. They'll be happier serving other people, number two. And, uh, you know, I, I just think... Uh, so we all, we, we should all, after seeing this movie, probably also New York than what they would push for have a Cabrini day. I think, I think so. Along with Columbus, yeah. or without Columbus, by the Cabrini day. <laughs> well, if they, if they have to, they're trying to get people to uh, replace Columbus with uh, a different day. And if you're going to replace Columbus, it should definitely be Cabrini. If you're yeah. going to, and, and, and I think somehow maybe that would be the work of a hand of God that finally this incredible woman that uh, served her nation better than anyone would now become the, the symbol. You know. Okay, so I think he's, uh, if you have anything, do you have anything else that you wanted to say or that we missed? Well, I'm trying to think of the name for the film and we have, we have gone through different. Oh, that, I mean, the title, you mean not the movie? Oh, the title. oh the yes. Mike, Tell me, did you pick, I, I, did you choose already the title? Well, we're, we're, we haven't titled it yet. We're, we're thinking of Cabrini because the, re, uh, the thing we liked about Cabrini was the Pope, when the Pope would see Cabrini, he would say, hey, Cabrini, hmm. hey, Cabrini. He, he will call it with, uh, with uh, just like a last name. Yeah. Just like a last name. And I'll tell you what else we did, by the way, I forgot. We made, mother, and when you do a film, the big, the guy behind it is the executive producer. He's the guy behind the film. We made Mother Cabrini the executive producer of our film. And the effect that had on the cast and on the union workers, they were on fire. When they just did this film, they were on fire. Like she was behind the movie. They could, yeah. they could feel it. That's who they were working for. They're all working for her. Nothing to do with us. It's all her. And when you see the film on the screen, it's going to say executive producer, Francesca Capri. Very good. Thank you very much for uh, this interview. I see, you know, you are, you are in something that is much bigger than just a movie. And I thank you 
also has an Italian here in America. I thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And thank you for the interview. I appreciate it.